Hi guys, so today we are going to review Raven um, from the Teen Titans. It's a graphic novel by Cami Garcia and it's illustrated by Gabriel Piccolo. I'm not sure if I said any of their names right, so I'm sorry if I didn't, but you just like look at this cover. It is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So um, I actually haven't, I'm not very familiar with graphic novels, so um, I'm not sure if I'm reviewing this properly. <laughs> I'm going to give it a try. So um, I love the character Raven from the Teen Titans. Um, I really love the 2003 TV show. Um, I still watch it occasionally when I just kind of am feeling down or just need something to like make me laugh. It's a really great show. The characters' um, dynamics are on it are just wonderful. And of course my favorite character is Raven. So um, so this is not going to this is not going to feature the whole Teen Titans team if you are familiar with the Teen Titans team. This is just a solo book about Raven or a solo graphic novel about Raven. Um, and it's kind of like before she becomes part of the team and um, it actually starts out, I was expecting the way it started out, um, it started out with she and her foster mom, um, discussing about, discussing, I'm, I'm going to tell you because it's very short first chapter and it's, so it's not really spoilerly at all, but, um, they're basically talking about, um, her foster mom wants to adopt her, but they just found out that Rave or Raven just found out. Maybe her mother did knew before. I don't know. But Raven just found out that her father is Trigon. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the Teen Titans universe, Trigon is basically like the Satan of the DC universe, <laughs> especially in the Teen Titans world. So, um, and she, you know, she has these these um, intuitive powers. Um, that kind of are derived mostly from her emotions and one of Raven's struggle throughout the team the old comics as well as throughout the TV series is that um, Trigon is always trying to reclaim Raven um, as his own but also to just use her as for his own evil purposes um, sometimes through possession sometimes in other ways um, he's always trying to get her to go to the dark side, I guess you could say. Um, and so that's kind of like her whole kind of life struggle and she goes to ups and downs throughout um, different comic series as well as the TV series. So um, that's where this starts. They're driving in the car and they're kind of vaguely talking about this and all of a sudden there's a car wreck and her mom is dead and she has amnesia. Um, this happens incredibly quickly, and I was a little thrown by this, honestly, because um, I think it only takes, I don't know, it only takes maybe like three or five pages for this to happen. There's, um, let me see. Yeah, this happens in about five pages, um, and it's, it's really fast, and the only thing about it is that a lot of people... Um, anyone who is unfamiliar with Raven and picks up this book, or is unfamiliar with the Teen Titans, or anything like that, and picks this up, like, there's no, you don't have any reason to care about this character yet. Like, you don't, you know nothing. And, like, I mean, I kept reading and I like it because I like Raven. That's what kept me there. I already have a background with this character. Um, even if it's not necessarily the same background that this story set it up. Um, it's like... You know, you're a Sherlock fan and you go watch a new Sherlock adaption. You you don't really need to be have a reason to care about this Sherlock unless he's just completely different than all the other ones because you already have a history with this character and this story and you're gonna wanna watch it anyways because you wanna see the adaption. People who are unfamiliar with that need like they need to care. They need to have a reason to care, like any other story. So this didn't set any of that up, and I was a little surprised. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I was a little surprised that that didn't happen. Um, so yes, for anyone picking up this book or who has picked up this book and is unfamiliar with the series, I'm sorry <laughs> if you were confused too. <laughs> 
Um, anyways, so it, I know it is a, it's supposed to be a young adult approach to the Teen Titans, so um, it's, I mean it's dark, but it's not as dark as it could be. It's also, um, m like I said, more young adult, so there are certain like young adult tropes in there um, that have their pros and cons. Um, I don't want to say that they're bad because they're not really bad. Um, um, I've heard a lot of people say that they didn't like the plot. Um, and I would like to say that the plot is not bad. It's just, it was very rushed. And I, I, one of the reasons I was really excited about this is because I wanted a close up look at Raven and like something that would take, we would have a lot of character development from him, from him, a lot of character development from her. And it would like, we could take our time and, you know, really go in depth with her. And her character and there really wasn't a whole lot of that because the like the plot points move so quickly it was really just almost an overview of what was happening um so obviously she has amnesia so basically what happens is she has to figure out you know who she is what's going on because she still has her powers obviously and she you know in this story she's an empath um and which she is in general but um and so it's just kind of showing her struggle her you know powers being out of control because she doesn't know if they ha she has them so she's trying to control you know figure out what's going on if she's crazy or not and i think one of the cool things about it was that the author placed her in um placed her with her mother's family and her mother's family um is I hope we don't say this wrong. <laughs> They're kind of part of the voodoo culture. Um, it takes place in New Orleans, which is um, which is pretty cool actually. And I really like the idea of putting her in that culture that's very spiritual, so that when she starts having her powers, like acting up and stuff like that, she can go and talk to someone who's not going to be like, "Oh yeah, you're crazy. Let's go commit you to you know a mental facility." They're going to be like, "Oh yeah, no, I totally get what you're talking about. Here, let me help you." Like she can actually go have someone to talk to which i think is really good um thing to show in young adult fiction because um it's a good thing to show to young adults that they can actually go and talk to people about the problems that they have <laughs> so you know not everyone is just going to think that they're crazy and weird like there are actually people out there who are going to be like yes i know what you're experiencing or yes let me help you i'm not just going to alienate you because you think you're crazy um so that, I think that was really great, and I think it was fun. I've never read about that culture, um, not widely at least. Um, so I think it was really fun to kind of see a little bit of that, but at the same time I know nothing about the voodoo culture, so I can't say if it was actually accurate or not. <laughs> but it was interesting to like see in a different sort of format too, because you know I've seen it occasionally on you know crime shows that I've watched, or here and there in a short story, but not like in a graphic novel so that was really fun like seeing it depicted as well as seeing new orleans like drawn and depicted as well um but i there are a few things that i kind of didn't really like as well um like i said the plot moves really fast and i since raven had amnesia i wanted to see more of her realizing who she was and then actually realizes who she was kind of coming to grips with it because before the car accident she obviously had not come to, um, come to grips with who her father was and who she was yet and so it would have been nice to see her like slowly progressively like coming into her power after you know accepting herself yes she knows how to control her powers but that doesn't mean she's accepted um herself very well at all and so you know, usually you have, especially with a character who ha has powers or magic, there's stepping stones to them, you know, progressing <laughs> in their abilities. And there wasn't really any of that. It was just the climax, all of a sudden she realizes who she is and bang, she can do everything. <laughs> um, and I kind of wanted to see that more of her growing into herself instead of just she absolutely is completely clueless for the most part about everything who you know, everything about herself and then all of a sudden she just knows and she knows like and is okay with it all and i i really wanted to see that growth and development in her and that wasn't there at all which 
I don't, I mean, I don't know anything about graphic novels. Maybe they, maybe the plot moves faster in graphic novels. I don't really know. Also, you know, you probably, when you're, you, you're hired to write a graphic novel, I'm sure you only have so much space to develop the, the story as well. So that could very well have added to that. <laughs> there might not have been enough space to develop it. But at the same time, there was some things, like there was a guy, of course, it's young adult, and he was sort of relevant to the plot, but he really wasn't, honestly. Like I could, I would rather have there not been a boy and have seen Raven, like use that time instead to see Raven progress into accepting herself and who she is. And also, like she she has a she has a foster sister and i love her fox, foster sister her name i believe is maxine mm, let me check Sorry. it's max so maybe it's not maxine and i just made that up in my head i don't know anyways max is awesome i love max um and so she and raven talk a lot and help each other or max helps raven a lot raven tries to help max a little bit but max kind of like gives her some pushback because max has her own issues going on which i thought was really cool because you know obviously everyone you know that just kind of rounds out the characters a little bit more when they have some other issues side characters have their own issues going on that are kind of not completely connected to the plot so i thought that was really great that that was there um and i do love max but the thing is there was she had she max had friends and she introduces raven to her friends and her friends are kind of around but they're not really as central to the plot like raven doesn't really seem to form much of a relationship like friendship with Max's other friends. They're just kind of there. She just kind of really converses with Max and I thought it would, I think it would have been really great if re there was more interrelation like more f relationship building between all of them um, because that's the other thing. Max's other friends or some of her other friends, um, at least two of them, were gay. And there's something wrong with that, except that they didn't impact the plot at all, and they didn't seem to impact Raven's life at all either. They were just kind of there because they were gay. And I'm just like, that's really, like, it's like they were just these really shallow characters who were gay together, and that's it. Like, if you're going to put them in there, I want to see them developed. I want to see them have an impact on the character's life and, like, you know, the plot and everything. And so I was kind of disappointed that they w they were in there, but not more important, you know? Um, I think it you shouldn't have any frivolous characters in there. Um, another thing is, if you have watched Teen Titans and you, you're familiar with it, um, Slade is in here a little bit, um, kind of in a foreshadowing sort of way. So that was cool. I wasn't expecting him to be in it at all because I wasn't expecting seeing anyone else from the Teen Titans universe in here. So that was a lot of fun. Um, just him being in there and being relevant. <laughs> um, the other thing about it is, again, I haven't read graphic novels, so this could be a, a kind of a graphic novel thing. Um, I wouldn't think so, but what do I know? Um, the dialogue was just, it was very on the nose and kind of unrealistic. I was, I was a little disappointed because I love, I love well-written dialogue. And there are some pieces in here that are kind of that are done well but there's a lot of just like it it was just kind of like nobody's gonna say something like that or say it in that way and i'm sorry i'm shaking the camera um i was kind of disappointed about that but um yeah so there there were things about it that i didn't like i will agree um with a lot of people who were disappointed that there were some things in here that weren't that great but also the illustrations are absolutely amazing. Like I love the, I love just like still just looking at it. There's so much packed into these illustrations. They're so very detailed. They're so well drawn and I love like the color palettes here. Let me see everything, everything in like all of the panels, like really, it really gives you a feel of the characters and what's going on with them and um, who they are. Um, it really just, I think the, the um, illustrations really carry the story very well. Um, for one, I'll show you one of the school. It's just, they're, they're really great. I, can you see that? Look at these illustrations. This is my favorite. I, I really, I really like the illustrator a lot. Um, 
some of the things he does is lots of fun. Um, I've mostly just seen what he's done with Teen Titans stuff, but I've seen a few of his other things too. Um, also, I just love the color palette of like this like gray and like these purples. And every now and then you'll see you'll see a panel that's more it's in like complete color like a character or a thing will be in complete color to just like draw attention to it and I think that's a really cool way to do that it's just fun to look at it's very it's very Raven um, and it's it's very Teen Titans it's it's wonderful to look at um, and I, I think it would be really fun like if the, illustri the illustrator could honestly probably have a sort of graphic novel with no words at all <laughs> because it's just so well drawn if you're a Teen Titans fan, I think you would probably still enjoy this, um, just because, I mean, it's Raven. Everybody likes Raven. Um, the art is just fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and it is it is a lot of fun to read, even if it is not as developed as I hoped it would be. Um, it's, it's still nice. And it's, like I said, it's just fun to look through um, again and again. So... Um, if you're not a Teen Titans fan, um, your call. <laughs> well, thank you for listening, and if you've read it, I want to know what you think. And if you are a Teen Titans fan, I want to know who your favorite is. And, um, yeah. Yeah, tell me who your favorite is and what you're most looking forward to about maybe later Teen Titans issues. Thanks, guys. Bye. I have waffles.